Welcome to part 2 of my beginner's guide to romancing saga. Last time we went through the basics of the game and now we'll talk about some of the earlier quests in the game and I want to warn everyone here, none of these quests that I'll talk about here are obligatory. If you think they are, then you clearly have no idea what game you're playing. If I mention a quest that's happening in a place that you don't know how to get to or you try to trigger it but it doesn't work, ignore it. Seriously, it's not about life and death. Chill. <sighs> okay. One of the earlier quests happens in the South Estimir. You talk with the bartender, then the guy at the counter, then you visit Farah, who's got a house right down the stairs outside the pub, talk with her mom, then you can simply go to North Estemir, visit the temple, go right, and there fight your way into the place. Perhaps recruit Aisha. Uh, then you fight some more, then you get an option to possibly kill Wuhan, but I really advise against it. Just talk with Farah later on to get some jewels, and then talk with the guy at the bar to get your money reward. While you're at it, you should talk with the guy in the bar in North Estemir. He'll give you a mission which uh, does involve uh, just uh, going down the stairs and entering a room in the sewers, but hey, you get a lot of money for it. So with that hopefully done, you might want to recruit more team members to unlock more places. Like Barbara, for example. Uh, well, she will basically unlock half the cities in the game for you. Or uh, Sif, she'll unlock some very special places. Come to think of it, enter Shiverland once you unlock it with her and uh, leave right away. Now pick uh, Gado's village, you'll be there while skipping over the long walk over there entirely. Then uh, go to the village chief uh, at the other end of the place and accept the quest. It'll mean you'll have to defeat three monsters in three caves. Remember to always save when entering a cave, it can get rough. Best thing, once you finish this quest, you can return once you hit the next event rank and ask the chief to do it again. Next time, you won't even need Sip unless you want to keep her around. But be warned, the South Cave later gets this goofy music. This means that the difficulty level is uh, a touch bit insane. So uh, perhaps uh, be best if you leave and come back once you have around 300 HP. Okay? Since you got that done, check if you have How do I get more jewels in the Volunteer Brigade? And uh, then go to Eigenstadt in the Knight's Dominion. Really nice quest, but sadly you need at least two empty party slots for it to work. So make sure they're empty. And also during this quest consider giving over Theodore's equipment to someone else. He's got some really good pieces, don't let them go to waste once the quest ends, okay? So, uh, once you're there, just head inside, uh, find the one spot that trembles, but you can still walk over it without it crushing, keep walking over it, make it crush, then just explore the underground and you end up where you should be and you're done with the quest. Also, consider going through the frontier. Keep leaving and coming back to Weston and talk to that uh, one lady over there until you uncover both Yasi and Saoki. If you talk with some people in Saoki, you can unlock a pretty neat quest there. Also, if you notice some girl walking in ports of coastal cities, there's a, another quest. Go and start it, go to Orin Font, save your game and talk to some guy in Orifont with a package. Then after all that, go to the temple in South Estemir, 
Then the pop in North Estemir talk who to talk to everyone there, then go to the sewers and things should be pretty self-explanatory. There will be a sequel quest later on, much later on in the game. What else? Well, you could go to Crystal City, talk with some folks in the bar and this way start the chain of quests by going to the top of Mount's Curve. Just remember to bring a huge load of proficiencies because you will need to climb a lot. The more you bring, the less you'll need to worry about your mistakes. Also, the reward for the quest, uh, the feather, is a very expensive item. Don't feel hesitant to sell it. You could uh, go with an empty party slot to the pub in North Estemir, get Galaha, go to Owapu on Wallen Isle, listen to the folks at the bar, go behind the weapon store, then enter the cave outside the village, figure the rock puzzle out, then uh, deep inside the cave talk with the village chief, remember gotta have Galaha on the team, then return to the guy in the weapon store and then uh, fight, quest over, talk to the Gekling chief and get your reward. Also talk to the Gecklings until uh, until you hear someone talk about Captain Hawk. Well, if you have Captain Hawk on the team, you better leave, disband him, then talk to the Gekling again, he'll talk about Captain Hawk, then go to the village of Uso, then uh, talk with Captain Hawk there, and really get him on the team. You don't want to pay this much for that, that piece of paper. Then you go to Melvir. Oh wait, come to think of it, you could return to Oapu and uh, in the port there, sw f swim from there to Melvir. Hey, uh, now that I think about it, you could perhaps meet the guy whom uh, wh uh, from that quest in North Estemir with his mummy. Uh, if you talk to him before sailing to Melvir, you might trigger another e some quest an event, so to speak. Uh, there you'll be on the ship, you'll have to talk with the passengers to save them, then in one of the places of the ship a boss battle will trigger, and if you win, great, an expensive item to sell, and also jewels. If not, too bad. Guess you did uh, do this quest too early, but don't worry, things will uh, take an interesting twist, and. You'll run around until you unlock a place you could only unlock if you were to recruit Barbara. That's a whole nother story. Once you're in Melvir, visit the library on the first floor of the city. Deep back inside it, there's a book on languages. Read all entries and boom, jewels. Then go to the same temple you visited in Wuhan Secret and go get more jewels and a fancy necklace. Then go back to Melvir, talk with the guy in the police station on the base level, and check if he says something interesting. Could it be that the Emperor is sick? Well, I guess then we've almost reached the half mark of the game. So let me now discuss some other parts of the game which you might be interested in. Well, first off, treasure maps. If, if somehow a monster dropped you a treasure map, it's a pretty rare item and and to be honest, you should not bother picking up treasures from those maps unless uh, unless it's already pretty late in the game and you have a high surge proficiency level. But uh, the basic gist of it is uh, that you get random items. I think I made a video the infinite treasure map trick, so I suppose you should watch it, although I highly doubt you could uh, just do that, pull off that trick on your first playthrough, considering there's a demand for a trader class, so, eh, so pay it no mind, just look at it as a guide. The next thing, I have a certain tip. Uh, Usually when I play it and have a bunch of physical fighters, I give them I 
I go to a martial arts trainer, there are some in a few cities, and switch their mode of fighting to defense. And also I spend all my jewels to give all of these fighters, well, only level 2 in martial arts. Since it is uh, a bit later in the game, I think uh, them sparking attack from the, that bunch is uh, not that uh, unlikely, and sooner or later this way they'll learn Second Wind, which I personally consider to be one of the best spells uh, techniques in the game. If, if, since you won't be spending all your money on magic, you might actually have a lot of cash to spare. So, my tip on how to spend it. There are certain items which are certainly unquestionably going to be valuable and you will probably keep them until the end of the game. So here are a few item names that I consider the best. Fashionable Helm, Field Plate, Conqueror's Gloves, Leg Mail, Guardian's Ring. And just a little tip. Again, naturally you can get something else, but it's the stuff that I usually get and serves me pretty well. But uh, since you'll be buying uh, stuff from stores, you will unquestionably raise the brand level of... Uh, in specific stores, that is. Uh, uh, I don't know if you didn't notice it, but when you're in a store, there's these free bars on the, le on the top left, and they mean specific vendors, and each store has a specific relation with a specific brand of stores and uh, the thing on the right uh, all these numbers add up to 300 and well the basic gist is that it kind of spreads uh, the influences are spread between these stores and if you want to raise a rank with a specific vendor you should uh, sell to a vendor who has like who has a relationship of 300 with that specific brand or something and then just saying could be useful later on to unlock the, some of that best equipment that I've mentioned <sighs> So what else uh, I still have to discuss herbology mining and trading Those are all also part of proficiencies gathering herbs gathering ores and trading with monsters Personally, I think for a beginner, trading might be the worst option, and personally, I never consider it that useful. You could uh, try to gather herbs or ores, but then things can get complicated, and just a warning, if you want to do it, and you did find out that, uh, you know, blacksmith helps mining, and herbologist helps herbology, just be warned, do not get class level 3 in those classes. You might regret it later. Seriously, on the first play flu, cl class level 3 is a bit of a big deal. Just remember. Oh yeah, and since we mentioned the blacksmith class, there's also blacksmithing. For now, I do not advise people to play with blacksmiths. Yes, I've mentioned that the Rosalian officer does need it to actually properly work, but it might be something for much later in the game to use. And again, I did mention that ins for now do your job. Do not uh, alter too much stuff with your current equipment since uh, you will likely find better stuff as the game goes and if you alter an equipment now then resting at an inn will not restore its DP. So to me that's a major killer. <sighs> Either way, uh, this is it for now. This was part 2 and we'll see us in part Free, where we shall discuss some of uh, the parts about saving the Emperor of the Fall, the continuation of the Knight's Dominion, and how to obtain other Fate Stones, and also the Elemental Lords. See you then! Hey, it is I, Feral the Gecko. I hope you've enjoyed the video. 
In fact, I hope you enjoyed all the romancing saga videos that I made. But, uh, could I ask you a favor? Would you kindly check out my new channel? It's called Feral Forever. There, I review video games and TV shows. And before you start to wonder why you should care, the first video games that I'll cover will be part of the Saga series. That's right, you can expect Romancing Saga to be covered in the third episode. Or hey, how about you just look at my other Romancing Saga videos? My channel is the only place to see some of them, and yet a generic video of Final Fantasy XIII amongst thousands often gets more publicity. Let's change that now! Give them likes, spread the word, share them with other people, or, well, you could also check out my website. Follow any of my channels or, or follow me on Twitter. Please. I don't love the game as much as it may seem. I had a very, very difficult time recording this, and I'd want to get something for it, uh, at least something more than just a, uh, okay, thanks, bye. Uh, thank you for your attention. Bye.